Patrick, in trying to understand what we are as human beings, what is our mental state, where does it come from? There are two radically different views. Uh, some would have what they call a neurophilosophy, that anything you want to know about the brain and the mind and the human spirit in any sense has to be based on the neurons and the systems and the brains that we have. The other approach, which some have called neuromania, which says that when we do that, we really distort what human beings are. When we say that all human psychological activity is 100% the brain, we distort. Mm. So from your work, in, the, in, in your experiences, uh, where do you come down on this neurophilosophy versus neuromania? What, what, what should we base on our knowledge of the brain? I, I think it's totally reasonable to say that all mental phenomena is linked to brain function. There's plenty of evidence for that. But it doesn't exhaust. I mean, looking at the I, I really don't understand that position. How can looking at a bunch of neurons tell us something about a musical composition? It can tell, it can, it, it can, you know, the quality of a musical composition. It can tell us that you need that area in order to put that composition together. But the composition itself has an independent status. You know, so it, looking at the brain doesn't exhaust what we know about the musical composition. There's something independent there that that is all its own and that we need to study on its own and respect on its own. So I think that's where I would come down on that crazy. I, I think it's a useless debate. Well, I'm not sure because uh Granted, the musical composition has its own uh, level of description. But for us to appreciate that description, it has to be encoded in, in our brain. I mean, however you want to define that musical composition, and, and some are great and some are not mm -hmm. great, or whatever, mm -hmm. the, how are you ap appreciating that if not by... A, a very complex set of neuronal activities in your brain. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you do appreciate it, you do produce it, and you do appreciate it via the brain. The brain is involved, absolutely. Without anything else involved. But it doesn't exhaust what's going on there. As, as I was trying to say, I'm not articulating it that well, but there's something independent in that musical composition that can't be tied or linked to neural network firing patterns. There's something more there. Now, I'm not saying it's immaterial, it's non-physical, or it's some soul substance. I'm just saying that it's, it's something that we haven't yet defined. We, haven't, we don't have the vocabulary yet to really categorize and grasp what mental phenomena really are. It's some, yes, it's physical, but it's something more. It's, it's, it's something else, and we don't have the words for it yet. And all I'm saying is have humility, you know. No, be scientific. Be rigorously scientific and just say, the, the jury's still out. We don't have the full evidential set yet. What possibly could we know more that will help us to understand this problem? Uh, well, we need to know more about what the basic stuff of the universe is. You know, what, what is matter? Some people say it's, it's vibrating strings. Some people say it's, it's a combination of information and quantum fluctuations. Some people say it's just a bunch of atoms. And so what you're saying is that... that matter is fundamentally mysterious. The physical reality is fundamentally mysterious. We don't know what it is yet. We have ideas, but it's, the jury's out. So your claim is that, it, that the way to understand that musical piece and what's in that musical piece that cannot be described in terms of brain activity. If there is such, and you mm -hmm. say there is such, and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm saying I don't know, but you're saying if there is such in that, that that would be explained or could be explained in terms of a deeper understanding of the, the fundamental nature of matter itself. That's right. That's a big claim because the order of magnitude of where the fundamental matter is operating mm -hmm. versus the, 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 the level, the order of magnitude of neurons and, and, and electrical activities and chemicals across synapses and neurons is enormous. 
Yeah. The orders of magnitude are, are billions of times yeah. in terms of that difference. But your claim is that what's happening here could have an effect here? Uh, well, let me put it this way. If you complexify enough what you mean by neural activity, then I'd be willing to say that the musical composition can be one-on-one -on -one identified with that neural activity. If by what you mean by neural activity is sufficiently complex, if all you mean by neural activity is what most people currently mean by it when they say those words, then, it, then I think you can't reduce the musical composition to that. So what does it take to get you to that highly complexification of the neural activity? Well, it's well, going to take more time, more investigations, more empirical But in data. principle, you think that's possible? I don't know. The jury's out. We don't know. We don't know what the fundamental constituents of the universe are. We, we don't know. It, some people say that the best model we have is that each constituent piece is composed of what we traditionally call mind and what we traditionally call matter. Maybe that's the case. We just don't know. Let's, let's investigate.